I cannot, I cannot believe that I forgot that they recycled maps for the paralogs. How does this affect my ratings for levels that use the same map? Is this good or bad game design? Why is this commoner filth sharing a map with the high noble prince of house Gloucester? Fucking madness! Part 1. White Clouds. Red Wolf Moon. Death Toll. Today's map tests the player's ability to optimize their playstyle. They must efficiently clear out enemy units, while at the same time quickly maneuvering to specific areas of the map in order to complete the side objective of rescuing these dipshits. But before I dive in on the pain and frustration these green pukes caused me, I want to take a moment to touch on the main objective, kill the boss. This objective is easy, laughably easy. He's a generic, no-name enemy that's placed at half the distance of the boss in Lorenz's paralog. No warp spells needed, no strategic shoves, repositions, or dancers required. All you need is a good flying unit with the stride gambit. I like that they give players the option, so that it's not just a route mission. They just need to make it a smidge more difficult to make us have to work for it a little. I mean, it already overtook chapter 7 for easiest chapter so far. And that was one video ago. That's crazy. But once again, most people aren't going to do that, including myself. I want to get all that sweet, sweet experience and save those dumb green units for the rewards. Plus, Raphael asked me to. He's a good boy, and I'm his teacher. I don't want to let him down, you know? Saving the merchants can be rather difficult. In order to do so, you have to deal with the two points of interest at the bottom. First, you gotta lower the drawbridge, clearing the path for the merchants to escape. And then you gotta draw the attention of Clifford the Big Black Demon Beast before he snacks on a delicious commoner croissant. Aggroing any of the units in the centralized area will have the whole map running at you like in Chapter 5, which will probably result in the death of you or the merchants. This level becomes sort of a sneak mission, you're treading along the edge of the map, avoiding detection, while trying to secure the objectives as quickly as possible, using all of your resources to do so. It seems like you would want to load all of your go-fast resources onto the right side. You know, stopping the big monstro who can one-shot the green unit seems like a pretty high priority. Nope! They need to be dealt with at the exact same time, for if the bridge is not lowered by the end of turn 2, these motherfuckers will turn 90 degrees and run headfirst into the enemies. <sighs> Why are you like this? Methodical planning time was spent routing out this chapter. Several hours spent planning each move. Many, many restarts were had. I needed to make sure my flying unit could survive the beast and the other enemies, while the rest just crawled slowly through the forest. If this dickhole wasn't dealt with, he would run to the center of the map and alert everyone. I had to use every single tool available to me. It was stress inducing, it was painful, it was annoying, it was amazing. This is a wonderful implementation of Treehouse's design philosophies for front loading the challenge. Putting the challenge at the start makes it like a puzzle, where they get infinite tries to solve it, instead of, you know, working towards the chance to try and solve it. So if they're going to give you infinite tries, they might as well make the puzzle hard as hell. I love this map because it frustrates me so much, and I'm kind of sad that the map becomes laughably easy after this. You just work the choke points and then eliminate every enemy, and the boss is just so easy to kill on turn 1. But this optional challenge was just too much fun not to give it a positive rating, so 6 out of 10.